more comfort picks if they aren't already doing that. Also, I think hey. this team is gone. Am I allowed I to go in there and like cheer for them just like I did for COG Camps last season? I mean, uh, nah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you're allowed to, but at this point, they don't they don't need anything they can get. I feel like they need more than cheering. All right, uh, can I? Uh, With all due respect to CRC, I think they may need more than cheering to stop this oof. rolling over. My uh, yeah, is, well, am true. I allowed to go in there and like do it? I, mean, that's <sighs> I guess not. That's not me. I don't know, man. Like, this is just so... It's just so one-sided. I was it just, kind of expecting more. I mean, we were making jokes talking about, oh, they can do troll picks and just roll over them, you know, using stream mechanics. But this is, is it even a joke? I, I, I can see that happening. I honestly can. Lee Sin's not the worst champion right now. So, I mean, like, if there's anything that was really trolling on FNF's side, it was Lee Sin. And, and maybe the Poppy. I mean, the guy's name has Lee Sin in it, so... It, yeah, we can still call it boosted. Don't worry about that. By the way, uh, yeah, he messed up that top gank, so he's boosted. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, I saw the top gank and I thought maybe there's low hope for uh, Team Crank. Maybe yeah, when we were talking about we'll it, I told series. Kenny, "Hey, maybe I can call him boosted, Leeson." And then he makes like three really nice kicks. Yeah. And, uh, can he we? He looks uh, better than me on Leeson. Could there. we? Uh, good question. Could we like? Pause finals right now and like go click on the new bio for Lee Sin and just read through it before. Uh, yeah, he, he got Lee Sin lore buff right there. Oh, he got the lore buff? Yeah. I don't do anything about lore, so. I mean, this lore is longer than four words, you know. <laughs> Was it only four know. words before? Damn. Yeah. Lee Sin, uh, lined up. <laughs> there it is. Frank, oh, I don't have to. Oh, yeah. They're with that Shin Ben again. First Ben again. You know, I it, really it, hope. That CSC changes it up. They're really, they really want to ban Alex Prism, honestly. Camille ban. Oh, yeah, there's uh, something one, something one, like, talked about. I feel like well. it's a waste. But, guys, I, mean, I have a question. I want CSO ban. Like, what, what can you ban out when you ban out so much of the top laner? How many bans do you have left? Yeah. I mean, Zoe didn't really take over that game. Okay, good. They there's did ban it at least. I mean, he had some but... trouble. First of all, went to Zoe this time, you know. That's something. First blood came in at 3.15, an entire minute minutes. later, an entire 50% later the first game. Still a lane solo kill though. Yeah. Um, Under tower, he tower dove to cast it and to kill him at level 3. Ridiculous. It's just so sad. Oh, a little bit of a side note, a little bit of a segue, but very important. The support for FNF, Adun, has been switched out for their regular season support, so cross tower. So we will be oh, seeing okay. a different cool. champ pool from their support this time. All right. Unrelated, Kaisa first pick. I'm excited. Oh yeah, FNF banned this out the last two games. Seriously, Tom Kench for next then counter. I feel like Tom Kench is really good into Kaisa because if Kaisa W and R is onto the ADC, Tom Kench just swallows them and then Kaisa is hugely out of position. So I already really like that pick. Let's see that. What if Kaisa dashes to Tom Kench himself? He still swallows the ADC and Kaisa can't do anything. Oh yeah. Well. He hits Kaisa. He doesn't Kaisa. Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> pick. I mean, you're down 2 0, right? All, all, all. What's the word I'm looking for? I mean, you kind of want to go for comfort, what you know best, what you can win with, but yeah, all you just are off, straight right? counter pick yourself. To get the series, you have to win. You have to win this one game. That, and I think that's a mindset Crank has to go into. Before imagining themselves winning the finals, they have to imagine themselves winning the game. Before that, they have to imagine themselves winning. You know the lanes, the macro, so they have to just get a small win into another uh, baby, steps, win. baby steps, yeah, baby but steps, but they countered themselves in two lanes. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's start the baby step pick, pick I mean, if they want to, the if they want to, like the first step's got to be not losing lane, right? Yeah, that's that no, true. The first step is, and then they pick Rakan into Tom Kench and Maokai into Renek. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, this is literally the lane that lost for Crank, you know. Wait. Top lane Prism or G1v2? Wait, I like this chain pick. So this doesn't add up, right? This is basically 2 plus 2 equals 3. Two plus uh, three. I'm gonna need you to elaborate. Like, I just had to saying... one time. So, like, <laughs> I, I think I see what you're saying. So CRC they want... needs to win. So they want to, like, grab the most points inside uh, their pick bands and, like, beat them point-wise in pick bands, but being champions. Getting good picks, 
Wait, they're play they're basically picking like oh, Champions are supposed to be like Grand easy. Fan. I'll have to say something interesting. Concerning that swing ban, I really would have liked to see Crank actually pick the swing instead of the Maokai in that first phase. I feel like he was doing well on swing, and the Maokai isn't exactly something as necessary. Either. Yeah, you wonder why they didn't just pick it. Now we are into second phase. I don't know. Olaf and Zach are banned. To note that Trundle is not banned. Mm, that is something. Ooh, after not pulling out the old. Uh, once again, leaving blind pick for the jungler too. This is this is what Bravo Waldorf uh, is known to go for when he's always been out. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is based on his, you know, the team style of Wombo combo. Normally, they have a Jarvan to go along with it. This time, I mean, not banned. It's not banned. They still have a jungler up, so they could just go for that. Rags. Rags. It's got to be a comfort pick. I don't yeah, know, man. Yeah. I don't know. Gregus has like anti synergy with Rakan too. It doesn't. I don't know. It's like Rakan. two plus two equals three. This pick man is not adding up for me. And then as oh, is this a? Is Kaisa mid? No. Ezreal can they, can mid? Yeah. Ezreal, oh my just... god. Oh, Ezreal man. mid. AP what? Ezreal? what? That's true. Okay. So I mean, I guess they're. Pulling out something special. I, it looks like trolling to me, but um, <laughs> is it Ezreal or Kaisen? I think we need to figure that out first. Ezreal's a good pick into Jin. Ez Kaisa's a uh, bad pick into Jin. Uh, yeah, Kai you can't really Kane see how either one goes into Oriana because nobody really writes up the review for saying how good is Kaisa or Ezreal into Oriana. I mean, if you want to pick one of them, I feel like you'd want to pick Ezreal because he can farm from range. Definitely. And the, the Oriana zoning doesn't really affect him. Like, but... this is Q's range is just too small. i will get her way too deep into Oriana. Range. Maybe she wants to go deep onto Oriana. This is the second kind of does, yeah. That uh, the mid link for F and F pick uh goes back to after like he gets banned out is Oriana. Same with last week, he doesn't perform as well as or on Oriana, as Zoe, but he still, like, does really well on her, nonetheless. I feel like he may not need to. <laughs> Renekton, and Jin, Kane, there's so much snowballing, and yeah, then you just kind of... Yeah, you just kind of fall back into, hey, I can hit two people with my ultimate ability and kill them, and then we win the game. So, I don't on think he's going to be as hard-pressed to perform as he is on Zoe. I really Seriously. like the game pick, though. Seriously, though, uh, why? I mean, with this comp, they do have... And it's weird to say that when they have a Renekton, they do have a little bit more late game security than they had with their previous comps because of the Oriana pick. You know, Jin. I don't, I don't know if it's been fixed yet. Is the Jin Rage Blade um, interaction still a thing? The Jin suit? I don't actually know. It still works. I don't believe they hot fixed it. It's, it's not hot fixed. It's, it's, it's still the works then. Yeah, they, they have late game power, right? You know, that Jin gets late game, gets that Rage Blade. Once he gets to four items. Multiplicatively. So you can get over 1080 easy. Yeah, it's, just... it's uh, kind of dumb. Is it just me with this past year? Like, I'm not saying like 2018, but like from now to like last year, April, there's been like a bunch of like overpowered bugs and such. I mean, it's not necessarily a bug, just a uh, interaction. I mean, not yeah. It's it's the same. It's like the same thing with Caitlyn. Well, I mean, if, you, if, you say, bug, but like... if you say that we go back entire year, so what, what what would you be referencing from this time the year back? Like Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn Oh yeah, that. it's not a bug. That was so dumb. No, it was not a bug. Just overlooked interaction. No, that was just an interaction. Which and was, it yeah, to, it had to have been overlooked, because there's no way it yeah. made sense. Headshot every other shot, just... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that it doesn't make sense, it's like... No, it doesn't make it sense. It was too powerful, to the point where, like... I just think, hmm, let's give Caitlyn a uh, crits every other auto attack. I really want to know if this Without is Ezreal mid or Kai'Sa mid. Sorry to completely derail this, but... Ooh, it is Kai'Sa mid. Yeah, you're Kaisa right. Since, since I am... I mean... Bobby, Kai'Sa is locked Ooh. in for a little awful. Okay, Kai'Sa mid is... I think it's better than Kai'Sa bot, because Kai'Sa bot, he is going to get completely trashed down by this Jin. I feel like this lane is just going to... Wait, the lane Jin Kench into Ezreal Rakan is... I feel like it's really Jin favored. 
I'm, 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 yeah, I see, I see it being in favor as well, you know? Like, Ezreal farms fine into him, but Rakan is gonna be pretty well useless against Kench. That's where Rakan is not really a lane comp that you see that much of either, you know? I mean, they're all in is really strong, but... That's true, but you know... You wonder why he picked Ezreal Kench. with Zaya up. They picked Rakan without Zaya. Mm. And Zaya is completely fine in the Jin and as a blind pick. That's true. Maybe their ADC just doesn't play. FNF, I mean, uh, they already see did play the first game. game. Yeah. And in the second game as well, you know, uh, Monkey did play Zaya too. He did. It was kind of... It just didn't... Maybe he's not confident in it anymore, I should say. Yeah. He's just going through the ADCs until he finds something that works. Hey, Israel's a champion. Well, this is his last chance, though. I mean, Ezreal's a pretty fail -safe, uh, fail safe champion to fall back on. If you're a decent Ezreal, it's a uh, really powerful pick. Oh, and never mind, in the lobby they swapped. It's Kaisa uh, in the AD carry position and Ezreal, man. Wait, what happened? Did they switch? Yeah, they switched. That's that's all I, I can say, you know. They were in LCS that's... order, so that that's the important part, but they just swatched, sw uh, switched the champions. I don't like that. I think Is that Kaisa even allowed? I don't believe rules are written on it, it's just that the players must be in LCS order. I mean, you have a minute long loadout, so you can see that they swap and just be like, oh, they swapped, let's change our rooms. You know, wow, it's it's much harder mm -hmm. to. Just... I kind of want to check on that because it's kind of. You mean swapping champions to champs alike? Yeah. Yeah, that's allowed. It's allowed? Okay. It's not, there's nothing against that, right? It's just switching champions. Uh, yeah, so again, yeah, but it's players. misleading. It's misleading because you're in LCS order for a reason. Y you're in LCS for for a reason, but that's a tactic, right? To switch out. No. I mean, switching Come champions on. is isn't honestly. I don't think it's as big as a deal because you have that many yeah. long loadout. When you switch players, however, when you take your ADC and put them in mid lane, when you take your mid lane and put them in ADC, yeah, position, that's what's. Yeah. You're just like I have no doubt that's... against this person. Because like, I, I, I don't like it. If you swap your uh, champion last second, that's like just a tactical advantage. I'll be honest, I don't really like it. It either, is. But... Yeah. But it's not as much as like. Season 4 change, a. Hey. <laughs> I think Crank can take any small. Quote any small. Advantage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If it gives them an advantage. Because yeah, like, the only thing that they may change some runes playing against Israel is supposed to, as opposed to Kaisa, but I. Kind of... But in, like, the thing is, if you're like. What's it called? If you're not in row order on like before you go into champs, like it's misleading. That's like Actually, where you can't. I think we should have expected this. After all, they did ban on the Kaisa the first two games. You know, we should have expected Kaisa ADC. I, I yeah, and Kaisa, I feel like is a much better ADC than she is a mid laner. But the same can be said for Ezreal. I wonder if it's AP Ezreal. Hmm. Because I think AD would be better with their team comp. I, I would, if he goes Iceborne, I think it should be AD Israel. I think it should be Iceborne Israel. Kaisa already does enough magic damage on their own. The rest of their team, while being tanks, uh, you know, they still do magic damage to some Greg is okay. Yeah, Wait, yeah, I the, think... this is the biggest question. Could Kaisa actually have her ability to do those magic damage? Because that's a skill shot that gets blocked mm -hmm. minions as well. I don't want to see Her that. build is AP based though. Actually, no, not anymore after the after the change. The rage fight. I think they go. I think yeah. After the rage, they go they death change. dance. I believe they go death dance or they go full crit. So, <clears throat> uh, I mean, yeah. I don't think she'll be doing too much magic damage. I don't know what her passive damage is though. I don't know if it's magic or. Uh, I believe it's magic damage. damage. Wait, no, no. I'm sorry. This is Riot Games season eight. It's adaptive damage. I'm joking. I don't actually know. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, Dude, I was going back. Oh man. Yeah, no way. Guy. Well, that makes it AD. Right? That's true. It would be AD even if she goes AD. <coughs> you poggers, I'm yeah. not. Alright, we are 30 like seconds left in our Spectre Delay, okay. so we will go over to that a short break. As always, stay with us. We'll be right back.
Hello everyone and welcome back to game three, our potential last game of the series for Friday Night Feeders against Team Crank. Right now, Team Crank are currently playing for their lives as the Friday Night Feeders are looking to close the series 3-0. My name is XT and I'm joined by Reese's PCs. And on the blue side is gonna be Team Crank. The Nate Rose on the Maokai, Ruse Karen on the Gragas, Al Afiel on the Ezreal Mid, Monkey on the Kaisa and Wild World on the Rakan. And over on the red side, we've got Friday Night Feeders, Brazil Man in the top lane with the Renekton, Boosted Lee Sin in the jungle with Kane, Bravo Waldorf in the mid lane with Oriana, 1 2 Z and Syncrossa on Jin, and uh, Tom Kench. Oh, there's that. Oh, and we got a pause. We got a pause. First pause of the series. Woo! So, what do you think about the comp of Team Crank? It... Wait, you're the cover caster, man. Come on. I know, but... Alright, alright, alright. Well, I Team need your Crank... opinion here, because... Alright, alright, alright. Well, oh. Team Crank right now, they have a very interesting composition with a double ADC composition. Although Alafio can go AP Ezreal, there is a severe lack of wave clear for Team Crank. And if for any reason Rob Waldorf get ahead, they are going to get sieged on super hard. I'll back that up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I will back that up. <laughs> I back that up because I can't. I can't believe they took Ezreal mid. That that blows me away. Wait a minute. Both the ADC started with a Doran's ring. What? Let that sink in. Oh, the Ezreal and the Kaisa. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyways, oh, we we're going to get back. unpaused, and guess what the first dragon is? It's a, not an Inferno! The streak has been broken! It's a mountain. It's a mountain streak. Still pretty good. Still pretty good. Not an Inferno, though, so thank God we are out of that. Uh, can you imagine if the streak was literally nine Infernals in a row? I would... I would cry. And probably eat a sock. Sock time. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the flavor of the month. But here we go. Chunglers once again stopped being on opposite side of maps. It's a really interesting trend to see that the red side jungler always likes to take the Raptors first. Uh, it does give you a little bit of an XP boost. I don't know if they ever changed that. But uh, most junglers actually can't get away with that. They take too much damage in the early. Wild world. Little bit of an interesting pattern. It is forced to uh, level his grand entrance first. Although I think that'd be kind of expected. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's real mid. I can't get around that. That's real mid. Well, it's been played by, uh, I believe, Clutch Gaming. Didn't they do No, Optic. Optic Gaming. Sorry. And it worked out. But against this Fri uh, Friday Night Feeders squad. It's, uh, it's not a Friday, but once again, the top lane off to a pretty brutal start, as we do see the Nate Rose once again picking the Maokai into the Renekton, opting for this matchup, and he's getting pushed under tower. Yeah, I think the team just told him to maybe suck it up this time and try and do better. Hope, and for, hope for better somehow. And the question arises, is it just the Nate Rose, he's not able to play the Conqueror Champions thanks to the meta shift, or is that, you know, maybe he just prefers it for his team? Like, 
wonder what the reasoning is behind this. Yeah, it might just be it might just be a team thing, you know. Ooh. We're gonna have to see the grand entrance gonna be knocking up Synchros here, already taking a little bit of damage thanks to the second skin. Giving him a little bit of lick though, he is a little bit slow. It's the devour oh, though comes for Synchros here, trying to see if he can get the kill on the monkey. That's gonna be an exhaustion of flash being popped right now. As the battle dance trying to protect him, but the flash forward, 1 2 Z, trying to see if we get the kill. Yes, the fourth shot is gonna be coming through, but look at the boss side. Boozley said now he's gonna play, but can it be backing off? Doesn't wanna do a tower dive just yet, and first blood being handed over to 1 2 Z. We've seen this before, and <laughs> hopefully it doesn't mean the exact same thing. Yep, as the Nate Rose. And against this Conqueror Renekton as- wait, that's actually going to be the Van Twisted Advance under the tower. Brazil Man and Nate Rose both used to use the Flash, but I think that's gonna benefit, you know, Brazil Man more than anything else. As Nate Rose probably gonna be looking to back here. Oh, walking up? Oh, okay. To think- oh, he's not backing. Oh, okay. Now, a la Fiel. On this Ezra mid, not doing as bad as before. Bravo Waldorf, I have to mention, the Zoe is banned. So none of that in this game. Get that... Get that champion out of my series, please. <laughs> yeah, it's finally out, okay? It's, they finally decided enough is enough. They took that right out. They don't want to get beat up by Zoe again. Now Brazil man gonna be dashing forward, able to get the stun and immediately Bye. kills the Nate Rose! So surprised that Maokai opted to stay in lane. And last game we criticized him for not building the ninja tabbies early. Wonder if he's just gonna be making that change. Probably not. Nope. No armor. Yep. Now, we look at the junglers, Boosley, Sin, and Karen as we do hit another pause. So far, not really a lot of pressure, but uh, both junglers now are, aren't are really making a lot of ma uh, misplays compared to the last two games. Who's carrying now? A little, little bit, uh, has a little bit of control over what you can do. We see him in the top side right now getting some farm because the Nate Rose was taken down. Um, but Boosie Leeson on the cane. You already saw him. He made one visit to the bot side. And I'm sure he's bound to come back after he finishes his early clear. A summoner has disconnected. Ooh. A little bit of lag on Ruskaren. Unlucky. Did you guys know that AP Ezreal mid has a hundred percent win rate in NALCS? Maybe that's well. <laughs> it must I mean, be good. Must be good, right? That's why they went for it, right? It's gotta be good. It they worked in the LCS. They looked at that win rate and they said, "We need it." That, that's going to be what takes us to victory here. Yes, to victory indeed. But Bravo Waldorf no longer on the Zoe. And Boosley once again on the Keen. Same for Brazil, man. He is on the Renekton. So a little bit of changes here for the draft. But Brazil, man, we saw what he did as the Renekton last game, uh, on the first game against Nate Rose and Maokai. And, you know, this is probably going to be deja vu because we are seeing a repeat of that right now. And it's pretty much the exact same thing as the last game. You know, a little... The Nate Rose chooses to not sacrifice his farm for his life. And he he pays for it with his life. And that's going to happen every time if you disrespect somebody like Renekton. And you mm -hmm. walk up to him with less than a quarter health. Uh, now the Conqueror is a thing. You do get bursted with it a little bit more. Uh, so it's he's really bad <laughs> really bad news for a tank oh yeah definitely and this patch 8.6 has not made it any easier for tanks as you know it's not just renekton that's gotten buffed you know darius fiora Jax, the likes of those are seeing research in the top lane thanks to conquer being available to them and it's no surprise here that you know if you you can't safely blind pick a tank anymore because you're going to be prone to those champions that can really just punish you. But the Nate Rose, Crank actually opts to get the Maokai into this Renekton once again, which is pretty pretty interesting to say the least. I you know, if if I wanted to pick a tank into a bruiser, I think the best choice would have been Orm. 
in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd have to agree with that. Orn, Orn's a pretty safe uh, tank to play into a bruiser. It still loses to the likes of Darius and whatnot. But it does have the wave clear under tower, so it you can push back a little bit. Oh, yeah. But I think it is important to note that currently this game is going in the favor for Friday Night Feeders, and it's not because of the top lane. It's mainly because of that early bot lane play by 1-2-Z and Synchristeer, and now they're just able to have this pretty early lead against Monkey and Wild World in the bot side. And, you know, whenever you're playing Jin, if you have that early game, it's just, you know, it's going to yeah, be a Yeah, Fed Jin. A fed gen just feels really good to have on your team. Always just one shot to any squish. You see, you see a squish get three shot, and you just say, "All right, we got this." It's almost like a confidence booster. Yep. And we do see right now, as we are still in the pause, Bruce Karen still having a little bit of internet issues. Uh, we will be getting into this game very shortly. Um, right as we get into this game, I'm going to talk about the mid lane, and Alaf the Elves currently has had a great series against Bravo Wildorf, and Bravo Wildorf, the unsung MVP actually, constantly able to win these lanes in the mid, more than anything else, because, you know, last game, Brazil Man and Innate Rose, they opted for the Tank v Tank matchup, the Scion in, and the Poppy in. It was pretty even, but the lane that kind of just snowballed on control, uh, once again, was that Zoe, uh, Kasten lane, and now we're seeing the Orianna into... The or Ezreal into the Orianna, so how do you think that's going to be working out? Uh, the Ezreal is always going to have a little bit of mana problems early. Uh, he needs that tier to get online, but uh, thankfully Orianna builds that now, so... Should be more or less just pushing waves in onto the Ezreal over and over again. Yeah. But that's going to give the Orianna the opportunity to roam around the map and make some plays while Ezreal is stuck farming his wave. Well, there was a time that, you know, it was said, the more carries you have in your team, <laughs> the the much better chance you have of winning. And I guess this game, Tink Crank, are just opting, you know, if we have two, if we have two carries on our team, there's no way we can lose. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I mean... Most AD uh, carries on my team wins! I mean, that that's how I want to... I'm trying to think optimistically, man. You're, you're, uh, you're trying I'm, to buy I'm, here. I'm trying. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to counter that. Well, so we look at the mid lane tier finally completed for Alafia as Roos Karen unfortunately disconnecting once again. League of Legends having a little bit of issues on Roos Karen, unfortunately. Hopefully that gets all resolved as. No. I, I kind of want to talk about this jungle matchup because although we were focused on the mid and the jung uh, bot earlier, it, Boost at least in this whole entire series has been able to consistently, you know, constantly invade thanks to the amount of pressure that all his lanes has, and he's just able to freely do whatever he wants and pressure Riz Karen all the time. Uh, you know, I think Boost at least is just out jungling Riz Karen. Regardless of the, what appears to be a connection issue, uh, he seems to just be more proactive and more influential around the map. And it's really just fueling FNF right now. It's just the last two games, he's done, put in so much work in the early games. And he's kind of popped off. I mean, he's pretty much done whatever he's wanted to do. You know, your camps are my camps, and yeah, he just rolled. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the Gragas is going to be an answer to the Kane, especially once he gets his form. Um, and it's going to be hard to get him off of your carries, so... I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, we are still going to see Gragas not in the prettiest of places in this meta right now. He's been picked over... Or he, you know, they're playing a champion that could do his job much better than him. He used to be the early game king, but Roos Karen not really able to get any ganks off successfully with the Scragus. Hopefully we see some of that change, though, in the future as 
Game's gonna get in pause. We're gonna get right back into this game. Unfortunately, that was the last pause, I believe, uh, available to uh, Team Crank. It's either three pauses or 10 minutes time limit, whatever comes first. So, mm -hmm. hopefully, all the issues got resolved. <clears throat> Now, right now, we are seeing spot lane continuously under pressure. Not really too sure if I agree with the Dorn's ring uh, from the Kaisen, though. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, you know, I'm not too familiar with Kaisa. I'm not. I'm no bottom laner, so. Mm -hmm. But now, Ruse Karen, unfortunately, missing the body slam. Not able to get the barrel either, but the Grand Interest is able to connect Raw World. Trying to see if he can do any damage, but Synchro Steer is too tanky. He's able to walk out, and unfortunately, nothing hitting from Rus Karen. That's gotta be really bad for him. Yeah, and Ooh. grand entrance gonna be connecting once again. But I don't think uh, this is a fight they want to trade or go into. Actually, that'd be a better word. But Sapling gonna be spotting up for so man. As top lane tends to be all the pressure, but look at the mini map. Bruce Leeson just took that blue. Feels bad, man. <clears throat> oh no. Now he was trying to see if he could make this up to the top lane. Dominus was up from the Necton, so they could have went for the dive. Or even, no, even, you know, the king could have started out. He does have the Umbrio Trespass to uh, reset the turret aggro, so. They could have committed, but it's fine playing it safe. Yeah, you know, they they really can just play it safe at this point. They've got every lane winning again, so. Once again, the Twisted Fan's gonna be coming in. Brazil Man taking a little bit of damage to Ominous Prop. As he's just gonna be getting a little bit of that safety net once again. Hopefully, though, Maokai does decide to build his Ninja Tabby suit to kind of just, you know, offset a little bit of this pressure that is constantly being given to him on the top side. Yeah, and it's, it's like, just another game, every lane on the side of FNF is ahead, they're all winning, and jungle is winning. Yeah. Um, no. Ooh, Shockwave Ooh. gonna miss. All off the L, face shifting out of it, but walks right back into a dissonance, but Mio on the bot side, bot side is able to connect onto Boozley Sim, but look at the bottom side of the map, 1-2-Z, so gotta be looking to break out. Killer Instinct to see if he can get the kill, but now Monkey is all by himself as Ruse Karen is gonna get engaged on it. Now that is going to be the curtain call. Ruse Karen gonna be taken down from Boosted Leeson now on the receiving of damage with the Umbrio Dress Pass gonna be able to save him a little bit longer. Here comes Brazil Man as Boosted Leeson trying to see if he can get it out alive, but no, Bower is gonna be taken down and this is not looking good. Oh. Once again, three kills going over to Friday Night Theaters. And that was just a bunch of miscommunication. It just. You know, they weren't focusing on one target. They couldn't even take down Boost Leeson, but maybe the Gromp could get him. Gromp? He's, he's going to be able to get out. Never mind. And beautiful play by Sin Crosser, and he flashes in and eats the Jin while he was at very low health. And obviously, he picks up a red buff out of that, and he gets a lot of regen, but saves his life. Team Crank doesn't get anything out of it. Lodric. Disaster. Lodric. Oh my god. Oh. Cloud Drake, yeah, oh yeah. Okay, all right, there's three Drakes in this series now. You can mm -hmm. settle down. Thank goodness. Diversity in the dragon department. That's good. This uh, giant mini wave though, Monkey does not want to miss at all. But, you know, right now, if there's one lane that's Kind of holding its own, it's Alafiel. Although he is down in CS, he's at least not really given up any kills yet, or it's not really too relatively far behind. It's just Alafiel, you know, you don't have, really have wave clear on that Ezreal. Yeah, and that's just that's just a a pick you really don't want to do. I mean, you lose all your priority in your lane, right? And that's a big deal in the mid lane, and you just really can't give that up. Yeah, but hopefully this is Alafiel. Past two games, he hasn't really been able to, 
you know, get his carry pants on. Swain wasn't able to ever really spike, nor was the Cassidy. And once again, he is going to be playing the Ezreal. That does require time for it to build up, but look at this. That's going to be the barrel toss from Chris Karen. But however, Boost Leeson is able to get the Umbreal Trust Pass, trying to see if he can get a solo kill for himself, but to be able to too, as Ruskaren is going to be able to walk away. Thank goodness for that sustain, and Ruskaren probably going to be going back to uh, do some more counter jungling. Yeah, it's pretty much, you know, his his jungle now. He can walk right in, easy easy ins, easy outs. No ult on the Gragas. Mm -hmm. He owns that jungle. This is my jungle now. Yeah, pretty much. Shockwave going to connect, and now Alafi will take a lot of damage. Gonna be able to get taken down though. Bravo Wadorf now very low. True shot barrage not up, so he cannot get that snipe. And not sure if it's gonna do for off to stay in lane. So you do look at the top side. Boost at least isn't gonna be able to get some counts for his own, but just Karen probably not gonna be able to read that. Maybe. No, unfortunately not. He's just gonna get that million farm. game does continue. It's very important to mention that every single member of Team Crank right now are just down in CS, down in kills. And I'd probably imagine down in gold too, you know. Can you give us a heads up on like just what's going on with the gold right now? Well, so far the uh, the Renekton is up uh, 1800 gold. Ooh, wait, sorry to interrupt. Actually, Ooh. right now the quickening gonna be procked as that's gonna be the first kill of the game. One, two, Z, gonna get taken down. Monkey finally getting a kill for himself, so that's gonna feel good. Yeah, uh, that looks like a greedy play bot lane, staying down there just for that last wave. You back on the cannon and gets caught out. Yep, and now uh, Brazil man. He tried to see to get the loot before himself, but it's not gonna be able to. As that true oh, shot for Raj true shot just missed the wave. That, that just actually missed the wave. Oh, oh. No! Sad, sad times. Wait, new BF swords, two long swords on the Kaisa. What? Where have I seen that? I swear I've seen that before. Well, here's something that you may be seeing though. Bravo Waldorf gonna be in a little bit of trouble as the he is gonna get taken down. Nate Rose though gonna be running into two people in the jungle. That's gonna be Ross for the cane here as he does get the nature's nature's grasp onto both the players as that's going to be a second kill of the game going up to team crank so a little bit of leeway they're not as behind as they were but you know we, we try to do analysis but we constantly get interrupted by action so it's yep. kind of heads up yeah uh Another note looks like about an average of and a thousand. And they want to fight this for some reason, but I don't think they're going to For some reason. It. Yeah. Oh, we're being used by Brown Waldorf. Hmm. Now, a la Fiel by himself in the mid lane. No, actually, he's joined by Wild World. This turret that'll be going down very soon. That hit the wave. Shot Barrage clearing the wave. A little bit different this game. It looks like uh, first turret is in the mid lane instead of bottom or top. Yeah. Now Monkey gets a lick and now is against Ghost and Shockwave actually. Oh. Monkey just completely take it down, isn't able to do any damage at all. And now Umbreal Trespass coming up for Boost Lisa and he's on the wrong side of the map, but once he sees he is going to be next to him as Wild World. Gonna be battle dancing his way out of there. Synchro steer in the bush all by himself. But look at the top side. Brazil man trying to see if he can get a kill on Nate Rose. But Nate Rose, for some reason, is gonna be going on this. Could be this the solo kill that he wants all for himself. He doesn't have initial cabins to do anything from it. But instead, this red buff is gonna be going over to 1 2 Z. I believe. Is it? No, it doesn't. Uh, Actually, no, it no, doesn't. <laughs> Alright, very... Uh, look at the top side, actually. Rift Herald oh. is spawned, but Brazil Man trying to see if he can get the kill. Nate Rose doesn't really have the damage to really counter it right now, but he is oh, going to no. be under his He's out of mana. safety. But he does his flash. Brazil Man maybe looking to see if he can secure the kill. You should just back off right now, Nate Rose. You're just one flash away from death. Don't commit to the play. Don't do it. Okay, he doesn't do it. Thank oh. you. Oh. 
He God. wanted to. Back. He still Back. wants to. Please. I'm just waiting for E E through the minions. Slice and dice right through the minions. You wait. Meanwhile, Quadric is gonna get taken, and now Ocean Drake will be the next dragon up. So oh, no Inferno is this game. Thank goodness for that. The Nate Rose still staying in lane. I'm He's not gonna really die. Sure that's the best. Uh... I don't know if this is the best option. He does heal, so okay, he's he's out of it now. Oh, he was so diveable right there. Oh yeah, man. Brazil man, just take it easy, man. Give our give our Maokai some uh, leeway. That almost looks like it. His best. <laughs> but instead, Nate Rose still trying to see if he can defend his top tower. He does not have mana. If this turret does go down, Nate Rose will probably be next on the chop block so yeah he's he's committing for sure uh, I feel like the Jaws music theme right now would be perfect for this <laughs> yeah just, he's just just use that overlay right now just throw on Jaws yeah, be he's, he is just so close to getting taken down as we do see in the bot side once you see instant curse here I'm gonna continue pushing this wave as now that is it. Berserker's Greaves being built, and now Nate Rose still trying to defend this turret. It's one uh, hit away from it being dead, but now look at Brawl Valdorf. Gonna be a little bit caught out. Mystic Shock not gonna be able to hit. Killer Instinct 4 Max Shock with not gonna be enough. Sorry, that's three man as Monkey. Gonna be able to pick up the kill on the Bravo, and now Bravo Waldorf. Not the slippery Zoe this game is getting punished for playing this Orianna, actually. Not doing too hot as compared to the other two games. Yeah, and. That damage from the Kai'Sa was absolutely Nate ridiculous. Rose now in a little bit of trouble is finally getting a dive on. I'm not sure why he never backed all this time. He is going to go down. Two boosts at least in. Good punish of that mistake right there is Brazil Man and boost at least in. Gotta be the dynamic duel to really take this top lane pressure on their hands. He doesn't he doesn't like backing, I don't think. He really wants those waves. Oh, he did buy for the... him, he's down 3,000 gold, so... He is buying the Sunfire Cave, no Ninja Tabbies yet, no Bramble Vest yet, so he is still going to be taking a little bit of pain from the auto attacks. Um, oh, he is down 3,000 gold. Yeah. Now, that all off EL. Getting a lot of gold, thanks to that True Shot Barrage. He does have the... What's it? What's it called? The Seraph's Embrace. There we go. There. You know, and what is that gonna do for the Ezra, actually? Uh, not, not much. It'll give him a survivability. Obviously, he gets the AP, but AP as real being a little weird. Eh. Let's get a shield though. That's cool. The shield. The shield should help a lot against things like the Jin and the Shockwave. Now it looks like they just brute force down these turrets, though. So. Yeah, you know, Tin Crank just completely not in position to really deal with that right now. And Baron's gonna be up in 30 seconds, and they don't really have any vision on that right now. Bless what? Soul. Got enough Tink Wards? Yeah, this is a blue buff going over to the side of Friday Night Feeders once again from Procio. The bully Nate Rose out of the, his own jungle, but look at Roos Karen. It looks for the body slam. Doesn't get the slow from the barrel there. Baron is now spotted. This could be a potential fight going in. Bruce Leeson looking for the two-man knockup. He is going to be able to get out of Lafayette. The shockwave only able to hit one. And now Bruce Leeson going to be forced to use his ultimate, trying to see if he can heal up for a damage. Kill Instinct going to be in the middle of the team. Monkey gets the first kill for himself. But now, look, Brazil Man is in the middle of the team and completely melts the entirety of Team Crank along with 1-2-Z. And that just goes to show how ahead they are right now. And Team Crank shouldn't be really picking these fights as Alafiel doesn't do the most damage right now. Yeah, and just sort of a botched engage by Team Crank. They they went into their own graves basically. They they pincered themselves, walking straight in straight into two separate ways that uh, Friday Night Fears were coming from, and they get destroyed by standing on each other like that. Uh, yeah. Definitely they should wanted, be fighting in a corridor. They wanted nothing to do with the shockwave, but instead they had to deal with a crocodile and 
you know, a guy who's obsessed with the number four. And now you look at his score. He's his four kills, four assists, and you know, Team Crank only has four four kills on the table, so that's a lot of fours. Yeah, uh, definitely. That's unfortunate. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, get it? Unfortunate. Uh, that one. That one was pretty Never. bad. All right. Don't don't judge. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> well, Ocean Drake is going to be spawning in 38 minutes. Reese's. What? What? What's uh, Team Crank's best chance right now? Uh. Somehow Body kill Renekton. Somehow kill Renekton. Yeah. Well, they're trying that right now. Dominus is going to get popped, but look at the nature's grass. Boosted Lee Sin currently on off. Yeah, but look at that barrier. And Seraph's Embrace, Boosted Lee Sin now very low. He does not have the ultimate to shock, but only going to be able to hit one. Roos Karen is going to be able to flash out, but looking for so bad. He still has the ultimate up. He is going to be able to get the kill, but look at that arrow. Actually going to be able to take down 1-2-Z. He is going to be seen to death as Bravo Waldorf also going down. But look at the back line. Boosted Lee Sin with the drive-by. Able to get the kill wow. onto all off. He finally gets the target he wants, but now Monkey... He isn't really in any other threat. Some Chris here taking a lot of damage, but that is actually a two for two. It's Team Crank putting up a little bit of a fight. Yeah, they fight back after a really great Gragas ultimate. Um, just splits everyone up like that. Yeah. Uh, Immediately kills one to Z. Pop like that. Hi, Kai's burst is ridiculous. Yeah. But. You know, that all started from Moose Lee Sin. He's just like, look, look at me. I'm the jungler. I'm going to kill a mid later. He does get in Look at me. I kill mid later. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, this motion <laughs> dragon is going to be going down very slowly. As, yep, that's Ocean Drake. And the next dragon will be an Ocean Drake. No more Infernos. FNF has every single dragon so far. Yeah. So dominant that. when it comes to these objectives. This whole entire series, Team Crank has not been able to get one. We got a tower once. Dragon. I mean, yeah, but like, that's not a dragon. <laughs> they should have probably picked Shivana or something. They would be like, hey, we actually got one dragon this whole series. <laughs> I can say you at least got a dragon, right? Yeah. Just be like, have, have a little bit of a trophy, just like, I finally got a dragon. Game 3 of finals. It's Shivana. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's pretty important to note that, you know, this is... This is a game that Team Crank are stolen. Baron has not been taken, actually, I believe, this whole entire series amount, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, Elvis can confirm or deny that later. Uh, you can make fun of me if I'm wrong. Uh, but look at this... Okay, they took one game one. I'm wrong. <laughs> All right. Thanks, production. Anyways, we are going to be looking right now at this Baron as both teams are fighting over vision control and not really something that we've been able to say for a while as both games that we've seen earlier have been kind of one-sided stops with Bruce Karen now making me a little bit of trouble. is going to get knocked up by Bruce Lisa. Three-level difference. Bruce Karen running for his life now. Bravo Waldorf, his shockwave is only going to be able to hit one and that... Arrow isn't Ooh. able to knock anyone important back, actually. Little Rob bit Waldorf there. really underestimated the distance uh, from his uh, Orion Ball. Hmm. Yeah, you don't always see that. <laughs> Monkey. Always caught out there. Slice and dice from Brazil, man. Not going to be able to connect. This ruthless pair editor usually guarantees a stun, but look at this Baron right now gonna get started up by Friday Night Theaters. And if you know Team Crank, they're nowhere in position to really deal with this. And yeah, this, this is pretty free. Yeah, they could make it to the end though. They are running right now. Every Friday Night Theaters need a run right now. All FEO is gonna be able to spot him off. Nate Scraps only gonna be able to connect on one Bruce Lee though. He does have to ultimate look at the middle of Nate Rose, though, taking so Ooh, much damage from all members. Nate Rose. Look at the other side. Both top players gonna be going down. Now it's a 4v4. Both teams trying to see if they can do any shock with only gonna be able to connect and run. But Bruce Karen, he does have the buy sign. Maybe gonna be considering connecting it. But look at the back line. Bruce Lee Sin able to get the one kill onto that right now. Monkey's trying to see if he can guide it out. Double kill coming out from Bruce Lee Sin. That's gonna be a triple kill. Maybe triple. a watch kill for himself. Barrio gonna be popped and no! That is going to be a steal! The Ooh, lick! Stolen. The tongue! 
taken by Synchrosius. That's going to be a successful Baron attempt coming out from Friday Night Feeders. And this should be inhibitor mid, at least inhibitor mid. Yeah, death timers aren't long enough. Team Baron taking. <laughs> uh. You're gonna be seeing right now. This mid inhibitor is gonna be going down. Brazil man committing to the teleport as the rest of this team is probably gonna meet up with him very shortly. Or they go for the red buff. I mean, this is their oyster. They can do anything they want with it. So at this point, they can pretty much do anything they want. So yeah. that far ahead. I mean, if they throw, that's gonna be like. That's probably the biggest score I've seen ever. CLGEU yeah. levels have come back. Like, this is a pretty tall order. More than that, right? It's gotta be more than that. Whoa. Well, we're gonna have to see. What was the gold dance in that? Do you remember? I have no idea. Oh, man. We can consult the timeline after. I want to point out something very interesting. We have a lot of interesting builds again, but this is one of my personal favorites. We only really see this on Lux, but it is going to be... The Ludens Echo Seraph's Embrace combination. Uh, in my opinion, one of my favorite combinations right now. The only unique passive you're losing odd on is 10% CDR, but it doesn't really matter if you took, um, you know, Transcendence. But now, look at this play right now. That's going to be a two man knockup coming up from the grand entrance. Kwonky trying to run for his life, but it's going to be taken down very low. Current call got to be shooting out right now. Who's Karen trying to see if he can take it down? Get down, Mr. President. I will protect you. I will make sure you don't <laughs> die at all. As one to see now, going to be joining up with the rest of the team. Here comes Mr. Zilo. Trying to see if he can kill Monkey is still alive though. Bra Waldorf now gonna be the next one to join. As the killer instinct going Whoa. to be trying to see if he can get away from that nature's grass onto two. Monkey trying to see if he can get away. He is gonna be able to kill onto this Brazil man. Now the rest of Fan Night Feeders are gonna be in a little bit of a pickle as they are the smashed in between, but now it's gonna be a split. Push game is flash four for one two C. He is gonna be able to get the kill. Look at Nate Rose though. He is trying to get the kill into Bravo Waldorf. He is just gonna be able to go back while off you though. It is gonna be joining in shockwave able to connect on two. Bra Waldorf is gonna be able to get one kill for himself, but maybe not gonna be able to get this kill. Feel gonna be able to save his life. One, two, so he's gonna be able to clean up the kill. And no, that is gonna be an end. And that's game. Should yeah. be game. Most likely gonna be game right now. Who's Karen trying to see if they can stop Boosted Lee Sin from crushing their hopes and dreams? Can Boosted Lee Sin be a two time champion onto this rampage? Like, one, two, so he's trying to see if he can do the fun shot. And that is. Wow world immediately taken down as Rus Karen trying to see if he can GG. do the touches. But we have a champion after a 3-0 dominant sweep. Friday night feeders are gonna be your spring season champions for Rampage 2018. Good job. <laughs> Very Good job. dominant victory. Uh every game convincing. Massive gold leads. Uh, they deserved it. Yeah, definitely. Friday Night Feathers, after a relentless many weeks, after facing their old allies in what's what? What are their names? Uh, TPM. Oh yeah, TPM. The end of the series is champions, and now Boost Lee Sin is going to be your first two-time champion in Rampage. Congratulations to all these five players. But hats off to Team Crank. They got, they made it to the finals for a reason. They were able to beat their teams up until this point. Um, you know, getting that upset about against random number generator put them at the stage. But unfortunately, they couldn't live up um, to the expectations, and they were unfortunately taken down by Friday Night Feeders and overall. Good game to both teams. Thank you so much for playing in the Rampage uh, the Rampage season. And uh, before we send it off to our analysts to kind of just close us off here, you know, Reese Pieces, what do you have to say? Uh, nothing changed. All series, you know, FNF always had the tempo. They were always the first to make the play. They were always the first to get the lead. First tower, first blood, first dragon. Always theirs. Really, really well played series. Yeah, I will agree. And, you know, overall, thank you so much, uh, whoever's watching, for watching these three games. Um, 
No, uh, we are just about to send it to Alice Desk to kind of close this off into Casting Desk here. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been a pleasure for us to be hosting all these wonderful Rampage teams. We do have signups open right now. If you want to sign up for a Rampage team, go ahead and do that. And now we are going to be heading over to the Analyst Desk to close this off. Take it away, Randall Joe, Kenny Master, Lynn Eldwiss, and maybe all the cookies there. What do you have for us to say? And I wonder if you're going to cut me off as I'm talking because... You know, I'm still talking. Ah, well. Thanks for conduction. See y'all later. I think that has, like, no problem. Mm -hmm. You know, at least they last longer, right? <laughs> I suppose. Oh, I closed the post game. How long did that one last? 30 minutes? Yeah, well, no, I lasted 29 minutes. They almost made it. Hey! That should be game man. one. Uh... Do we want to move uh, MVP, or should we talk about something first before? Uh... I think. Um, I mean, it's hard to decide MVP. The, the whole team came together very well, you know. They all played. Well, that's the well, thing the with first the, game. That's the thing with FNF. I mean, you can look at each one of the team, each one of the players on the team, and the thing is that they are, you know, mostly better than the average for Rampage. But it's not that any one of them is super good. What makes FNF stand apart from the rest of the teams in Rampage and do so well is that they are so well coordinated. It's unusual for players at that ELO to know how to be so well organized and so well coordinated. Yeah, like some of those team fights, especially in the Jinx game, um, the second one, their team fighting was just so clean where they'd like layer things and then they'd have the Jinx ult finish it because they set them up for it. It was just super, like, they looked way better than you would expect from a Rampage team. Even from a Dominate team, that level of coordination. No, I think they could be better. I think they're mid-Dominate if you, like, if they like, had the mechanics to back them up. If you place them into Dominate? If you place them into Dominate and they have the mechanics to back themselves up, they could be, like, well over mid-Dominate. It could be a playoff team. Definitely a playoff team, if I they're mid-Dominate. So. So, uh, anything interesting to talk about last game, or should we just move on to MVPs? I mean, I think I, I think the game had some interesting moments, but you know, F FNF just sort of it, it became the FNF show. You know, same as the first two games. You know. Yeah, I don't like. I don't know what there really is to say. Like, I mean, except to they, maybe call they won team fights with Mr. Mentions. Reynolds. <laughs> a couple of honorable mentions, like for instance, uh, Syncross Tire had a couple of really, really shining moments on Tom Kench. Yeah, some of his um, his Ws were so good to just nullify the Recon engages. Not to mention the, the first Kyrgyz W, engages. which got them first blood. Wait, uh, True. Before, we drag, before we drag anyone in, how should we uh, approach uh, second time champion championship? Back to back as well, mind you. I don't know. Yeah. We just say congratulations. Just give them, just just give them point, admin. Like, honestly, we can, just give them admin. At that we point, we call them a smash. Uh, we could discuss yeah. how, we're in, how we're planning on uh, handicapping boosted Lee Sin At next point, split we'll so it doesn't dominate. happen again. We put him into dominate. No, <laughs> we put him into dominate. <laughs> we force we, uh, him into dominate. We count him as plat 2 player. I don't and think plat two. Nah, that's a little too high. Nah, come on. We get someone, we get someone uh, from dominate. No, what we do is we get someone from Dominate to boost him up to gold. I'll do it. I'll volunteer. He can, volunteer. He can hit gold on his own. I'm certain of it. <laughs> oh. hmm. Anyways, MVP oh. for the series. Like, like, like we said, their coach. To say, but like... <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. think they have a coach. If anything, their manager would be Bruce Lee Sin. Bruce Lee Sin was the shot. He he was the one who makes the shot calling. I believe. He's also the one that probably If he's it. their straight shot caller, then yeah, I'd give him the MVP because their macro play was so clean. Uh, honestly, I for want the to most bring part, <laughs> I want to bring in uh, the mid laner and Bruce Lee Sin since one's captain, one's one played. Really oh yeah, the mid Zoe was really good. I think both of them deserve MVP. Like, let's move them both in here and like, see. One second. Don't 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 jump the gun just yet. Oh boy. Their mid's not even in the risen call anymore. <sighs> you want me to go yell at him? And nah, it's him? okay. Just get boosted in here. Alright. Because it's on. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> in Twitch chat, their coach is like, I'm the coach, give him some credit, I got you. Hello. Here he is, the man himself. Hey. How are you doing? See you, Mr. Leeson. Hey, guys. <laughs> you should get your, uh, <laughs> here. So, first of all, uh, Bravo, Bravo's in, um, in our, our channel if you want to drag him in. Is he back now? Yeah, he's back now. All right, let me grab. Right, let's get Bravo in here. Welcome, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's see. Let's. I'll do this. Uh, congratulations on your uh, championship, and congratulations to Boost the Lee Sin for second time back to back championship for Risen. Yes, thank you. But I'm not the only one um, from FNF to have a Adun second time. Yeah, Adun won twice as well, right? Yes. My Is man. it just him or was there another one? Uh, no, me and him. Just him. Yeah, actually, on the topic of a dune, I kind of, I mean, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to kick off the questions here in this little post-game interview. Uh, this one's for both you guys. Uh, one of the most interesting things that I've noticed about FNF just throughout the entire split is how extensively you guys make use of your dedicated sub, Adun Halar. Um, you definitely incorporate him so fully into you guys' planning and your drafting. He's basically a sixth member of the roster rather than being a substitute. Do you, can you just talk to me a little bit about uh, kind of what the... Um, obviously, it worked for you guys, but just talk to me a little bit about the the, the thinking that went into that. Uh, sure, I'll kick it off. Um, so originally, me and him were going to apply together um, for next season, and then he messed up his application uh, process, and he was placed in dominate, but he wasn't dominate. So eventually he got off a team, uh, the team that he was on and he had no team. And I got placed on uh, FNF and he had no team. And I was like, oh yeah, you should uh, be our like uh, dedicated sub or whatever, right? Because we, uh, we were allowed two of those. And um, he's like, yeah, like I was looking for a team. And so eventually he just joined our team. And basically, long story short, um, uh, we and like me and the team thought like his champion pools compared to our starting champion uh, pool support would be benefit us uh, in pick ban, so because we could plan in a way that if we wanted uh, Syncross to play for. Uh, different champion picks and then he would play for that game same with the dude and yeah so we and he also i mean he has an extensive top lane pool too so like he him and he's always been there for like brazil too so it's been awesome like on days that one person couldn't be there he was there for anyone yeah like last week yeah, yeah that, was, that was the fascinating thing because i mean he out of all the dedicated subs in actually both Rampage and Dominate, he is by far the most games to his credit. I believe last I checked, it was something like after, including today, I believe it's 17 games in eight matches. Okay, that's a lot. What the? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we talked about it like from the day one that we wanted to do in. Um, to always be a sub, or to be our main sub, and to, for him to play every single Friday with us, no matter what. Unless he couldn't be there, for of course. Well, it's uh, fantastic. It gave you guys so much flexibility in your drafting, just like you were saying. Uh, and like I said, obviously it worked. Yeah, anyway. definitely. Right. I want to ask you guys, what did you think about their Game 3 pick, Ben? As we mid, Greg is Jungle Flake. <laughs> Okay, I was really banking on it being a Kaiza mid, because I like to play Kaiza mid, and then when it was Ezreal mid, I was really, really bummed out, and I was like, oh, yeah. okay. And going going into uh, Game 3 pick van, um, my boy Bravo wanted to pull out the Kaiza mid, and um, the team agreed that we should have let him pull it out in the last game, possibly the last game of the, of the, of the season. Mm -hmm. And so we we didn't ban it, and we didn't expect a first pick of uh, Kaiser coming in from them. So that okay. was like whatever. And then later on in the draft, um, we were trying to force their jungler back onto uh, 
the Jarvan pick. So he banned two uh, two junglers in the second phase that he previously played to try to get him to play the, the Jarvan because he, he didn't look overly good that good on the Jarvan, and mm -hmm. I knew I could uh, punish it again, like I did game one. And he pulled out the Gragas, which was random. We did not expect that. <laughs> yeah. And the Ezreal mid um, was a pick. Um, I believe that their mid laner saw in the CLG versus Optic game, Power of Evil pulled it out. It is, it is considered a free laning phase for um, Ezreal, if you're a yeah. good Ezreal. But that's not that's not what happened. It showed in the CS um, uh, between Oriana and Ezreal mid, and Oriana basically destro destroyed him. So was it AP Ezreal in the LCS game? I don't actually. Uh, know. yeah, I think it was like a Lich Bane rush. Yeah, it was definitely Lich Bane. Yeah. They asked a Bravo question. So I was I think casting for you guys last week as well. So you're Zoe. It's how to say it. It's really above average. That's the nice way to put it. The bad way to put it. It's disgusting. So, <laughs> <laughs> will you elaborate on uh, Zoe? I I bought Zoe day one, and like it, I, I don't know. I just fell in love with the champion, and I just mained her. She's now my like top most played champion in everything. They let you have it two games, too. And they let oh me have God. it, yeah. I couldn't believe they didn't ban it the second game. I was like, are you guys kidding right now? Okay. <laughs> not, not gonna lie, um, the, their pick ban was Trash. questionable. Um, it was bad. Going, like, we, we, we thought they would change their bans, but the only <laughs> ban that they swapped was the their last ban. Um, they swapped around. They kept the Camille and Shen. I really so, didn't like that. Yeah, in the in the game three, we, we were like, let's insta lock or pick Ben just to like for him like intimidation factor, and we <clears> we <throat> didn't even see that they didn't ban Zaya or Rakan or let alone first pick one, and so we're like, oh, we could have took Zaya or Rakan, but we ended up we just ended <laughs> up taking uh, Tom I, Kench and stuff. I enjoyed the fact that they picked Rakan into Kench. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> that was also questionable, and then we. We early rotated the the Renekton because we ran a Scion, and then he, we knew he was going to go. Uh, high chance he was going to uh, pick the Malkai, so we're like, "Oh, well, watch this be Malkai," and he picked Malkai again, countered himself in lane. Yeah, that was really bad. Well, they didn't really have the damage for the Wombo comp they were going for. Like they had the Malkai, the Rakan, the Gragas, all for the Wombo, but then you only have an Ezreal and Kaiser to follow. So like you're AP is real too. Yeah. So what were you expecting to do? You guys were <coughs> you were going to get crushed in team fights. <coughs> any other questions? I don't have any other questions. Yeah, it's just so, so one sided. It was just like <laughs> it was almost yeah, boring I, to watch. Honestly, actually. Um, okay. Uh, if no uh, one, if no one uh, has any questions, like. I'll do like a statement before you guys close well, off. Well, before you do that, I actually mm -hmm. have a question for you. Okay. So, uh, I know you, uh, you're you a really like, uh, organized person. You like want your team to play, practice often. So how many times a week do you guys like practice, script, like all sorts of stuff? Um, to be honest, during the playoff run, we didn't have overly that much practice. In the ter in terms of scrims and and stuff, a lot of the teams didn't even scrim in general. <laughs> um, but during the regular season, and especially at the start of the season, where uh, like every team was active and every team was like in, like the most competitive, um, we we did have a lot of practice, um, like in terms of scrims. We tried to at least get one practice in a, a week and then if we could all do another day we it doesn't hurt to practice more than once but we would try to practice at least once a week if not more yeah um our i mean our coach set up a lot of our scrims and it was nice to have him there and like he plays with us like on like we'll do like norms and stuff with him and he'll, he'll go over like 
different CSing and like how to lane against other people. It, it, it was cool. So is that it for everybody, you think? Um, yeah, I just want to like do a final statement before you guys close off. Go for it. Um, I want to like give huge credit to our coach. He's been there pretty much the whole season. Every every time we play um, during the week, he helps us with practice and VOD review um, that we do as well. And just overall, without him, like FNF wouldn't be the same. Um, so I'll thank you, uh, Jake. And then as for the FNF like members. Um, I am super happy that we all won, and the hard work, uh, the hard work, the hard work paid off. Um, and to be honest, I think all of them deserved an interview today. But um, um, just yeah, know that just you guys have pulled well and um, should be proud. So. I mean, this isn't the D Rose party, right? And I no, think no. champions probably know the D Rose party. I think we, I think everyone on D Rose deserves this the interview because they're all one one v nine players. Oh God! Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I know. Um, I'm just saying, like previous previous weeks, we had um, our support. They were full cross, teams. Uh, feel like he he did so much, which he has, and hasn't got the credit for it. And like, because he's not the one popping off, or he's not the one caring. And you know, he was really like, good today. Like he, he <laughs> saved like on the on the Tom Kench game, he did a lot of work. Like when we like mispositioned or got caught out, he saved us and like I don't know, he just doesn't deserve the credit that he should doesn't get and, the credit he deserves. Yeah, it's like always one two if one two pops off in the bot lane or Bravo mid or whatever, right? Like he, he's just like there and no one notices like what he does and so i just wanted to like give a shout out to like everyone and like give them the credit they deserved yeah, you guys should have like Thank a you. wall of fa uh wall of fame in your discord and like <laughs> just take uh pictures of your support and just praise them and uh pray to him wait sorry all right now thank you um <clears throat> That was honestly like that was a really impressive stop by you guys. Um, well done, congratulations! Especially you boosted winning twice. Um, Thank you. We're seeing you and dominate next season. Uh, yes, <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's where you should be. I think you'd be able to play well amongst the dominate players. I'm looking forward to watching it. Did hit me up, Justin. Hit me up. <laughs> if, they, if they even allow me to dominate, of course. That's uh, first. Yeah, I believe... Um, I don't see why you wouldn't gonna, be in it, I'll move up together to uh, dominate, so... We'll see whoever that, um, is playing in that dominate next, next season. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. For sure. Alright, thank you to everyone. This has been one hell of a night. I'll ask thank congratulations over to... Bravo Waldorf, Boosting Leeson, and the rest of the team of FNF on your victory. Season 3 Risen Rampage Champions. Poggers. And Actually, now thinking about that, I think. Uh, never mind. Tell me. Uh, okay, then that will do it for us. Catch us in, I believe, four days. Yeah, four days. That's Friday. Friday, 7 p.m. EST. If I am not mistaken, that will be our final finals for our Champions League between D Rose and Henlo. Wait. Yeah, 7 p.m. Yes, yeah. D Rose and Henlo. And we will crown be good. a. Uh... Oh, yeah, definitely. We'll see if D Rose finally gets off of their full season win streak or if Henlo can unseat the champions. No, D Rose just continues it straight into finals. Right. And from all of us here on the <clears throat> casting team, 
also, uh, I mean, on the desk. Thank you, Artur thank you to our casters for today, XT and Rhesus Pieces. This will be a good night from us. Catch you later. Peace.